Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss accounting changes, an important topic in accounting. We make changes in accounting all the time, whether that change is a change in accounting principle, change in estimate, change because of an error. Regardless, we need to preserve comparability of financial information. Simply put, when there's a change from year to year, we need to present the change so we can compare the information, the financial information from year to year. Otherwise, historical financial data would lose its relevance, we would lose the trend, so it's very important to understand how do we handle accounting changes. Specifically, we deal with three types of accounting changes. Change in accounting principle, and here change in accounting principle means going from one gap method, from one gap method to another gap method. So they're both gap, they're both, both acceptable, and we're going from one to the other, such as going from the average cost to LIFO for inventory, going from the completed contract to the percentage of completion. Specifically, in this session, we're going to be focusing on this type of a change, but that's not the only one. We're going to have change in accounting estimate. We'll have a separate session for that. A change in reporting entity will have a separate session for that. Also, you have to know that we have sometimes we do commit errors as humans errors are not considered accounting change so errors are mistakes whether you misapply a concept or you made a mathematical error they're errors they're mistakes also adopting a new principle for an event for the first time or the amount was previously a material is not considered an accounting principle change sometimes you might see a multiple choice question about this just know this there are three approaches again there are three changes and we're going to be focusing on one change change in accounting principle and there are three approaches to deal with changes currently which is deal with the change this period only currently retrospectively and in this session we'll focus on retrospectively because if there's any changes in accounting principle we'll have to handle this change retrospectively therefore we have to spend few minutes explaining what do we mean by retrospectively and how is retrospectively used and obviously we have to look at an example to apply it because I'll, I'll explain in theory what does it mean but if you don't see it in an example it doesn't make any sense retrospectively means you will need to adjust the financial statement for each period presented to the same basis as the new accounting principle so what does that mean it means let's assume we have four year period x1 x2 x3 and x4 and let's assume in x4 you made a change in accounting principle and this change affecting x1 x2 x3 and x4 and you are presenting listen to me carefully and you are presenting x1 x2 x3 and x4 then you have to go back and do the change in all the years so you, because to preserve comparability you have to go back to do the change in case those financial statements are presented otherwise you cannot use a new method here old method here, old method here, and old method here. If you're presenting all of them, you have to show the change. Or here's what's going to happen. Let's assume there's a change and you are only showing, listen to me carefully now, we're changing the example now. You're only showing year X4. So you're not showing X3, X2, and X1. However, the change affect X3, X2, and X1. So what do you do? Under those circumstances, you compute the change. You compute the change. Okay, so adjust the carrying amount of assets and liabilities at the beginning of the first year presented. So here we're assuming we're only presenting X4 and adjust the retained earning. So what we do is we go back and we do the computation for X1, X2, X3. We compute the change and all this change, whether it's changing assets or liabilities, eventually it's going to affecting the income statements. The income statements are gone. So we change retained earnings. So all the change will be put into the beginning retained earning. Obviously, when I say retained earning, you're also affecting assets and liabilities related to that retained earning. But the change will be in the beginning retained earning of X4 because we are not showing X3, X2, and X1. So that's another way to do it. Also, let's assume you're only showing there is a change and that change only affect X3 and X4. It doesn't affect X2 and X1. Then you just, if you want to go back and present X3 and X4, you recast the financial statement showing the new method for X3 and X4. So that's an easy one. 
also sometime we handle the change prospectively which is going into the future and we'll hand we'll see what that means later once we use it so in this session specifically we're going to be focusing on changes in accounting principle and changes in accounting principle are handled retrospectively and that's the most challenging uh, of the three changes actually remember why do we handle it why do we handle this retrospectively we go back retrospectively to pres to preserve comparability from one period to the other now the best way is to look at an actual example now before we look at an example whether you are a student accounting students or a cpa candidate that's most likely who you are if you're watching and if you're watching it means you are looking for some help and you found me on youtube that's great go a step further if you want additional help farhatlectures.com I provide you additional resources, lectures, multiple choice, true, false, that's going to help you understand, practice, learn the material. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course. I'm a useful addition. I'm a companion to your education. Invest in yourself. Don't hesitate. Connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Like this recording. If you're watching, it's helping you like it. It's going to help others as well and share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's take a look at this example. In 20x4, Adam Company changed to the percentage of completion method from the completed contract. So we went from one gap method, which is the completed contract method, to the percentage of completion. Now the assumption here is you know what's completed contract, what's the completed contract method is, what is the percentage of completion. If not, you can go to Farhat Lectures about the revenue and look at them. Otherwise, just accept that it's a change from gap to gap and we can work with this for now. Adam believes this approach provides a more appropriate measure of the income earned, and for tax purposes, the company uses the completed contract method and plan to do so in the future, and assume 20% tax rate. So let's take a look at the figures and see how we approach a problem like this. For the completed contract method, which is the old method, here's our income before taxes for X4, X3, and X2. This is income before taxes. Now, these are the taxes 20 percent taxes and this is net income which is net income after tax this is the old method if we compute our figures using the new method the new method means that the percentage of completion now we change the method our revenue from, from for x4 goes from two two hundred thousand to 220 and our taxes becomes forty four thousand. x3 goes from 170 to 200 and x2 go from 410 to 700 thousand and obviously the taxes will change now what do we need to do we are presenting let's assume we are only presenting x4 x4 means just we are only presenting x4 so what do we need to do we need to compute the changes in x2 x3 and adjust the beginning retained earning of x4 because we're not going to go back and present x2 x x2 x3 and x4 if we need to do so we need to go back and recast recast the financial statement show them show the new the new method how would the new method works if that's the case let's compute the changes and see how we book this entry for year x2 starting with year x2 this is the new method this is the old method under the old method income was four hundred and ten thousand four hundred and ten thousand for that year income under the new method is seven hundred thousand our income before taxes went up went up by two hundred and ninety thousand for year X3, our old income was, was let's see, our old income was the completed contract, 170. Our new income is 200,000. Obviously, we are reporting more income under the percentage of completion because you would accelerate the revenue process. You would receive it earlier. Our income went up 30,000. All in all, the difference for the two years is 320,000. Obviously, we have to pay more taxes because if we earned 290,000 in income, our taxes are 58,000. If we earned 30,000 additional in income, our taxes will go up by six. Overall, our income went up by 232,000 gross income. Taxes went up by 24 and net income went up by 256. We need to prepare the journal entry at the beginning of X4, at the beginning of X4. So the difference in income is 300 the gross income is 320,000. Now if you if you know anything about construction accounting or accounting for construction companies you dump this change in 
construction and progress. This is an asset. You increase this asset, which is inventory, construction and process, because this is this is how you do it. You will increase the asset because we have more assets. We, re we created more asset as a result of accelerating revenues. We're, we're recognizing more, more of the construction and process, more of the inventory. We credit the third tax liability. We have now an additional tax liability to worry about because we changed the method, 64,000. And our earnings went up by 256. Now we cannot go back and increase net income. Why? Because the prior year are closed and we're not presenting them. We are taking all the change, which is the net change is 256,000. As a, as a result of this change, net income over the past two years, net income after taxes would have increased by 256. As a result, your retained earning would have been higher by 256. Your retained earnings is higher. 64,000 goes to, actually gross revenue is 320 but you have to pay taxes the net is 256 and you have to add to your assets construction and process 320,000 so this is the entry that you make at the beginning of year x4 because we are showing x4 going forward if we are presenting anything prior to x4 well we we have to change the financial statements and dump the change in retained earning in the earliest year. Simply put, let's assume we're only chain, we're only showing year three and year four. We're only showing those two. So we'll take the change, whatever change happened in X2, put it in the beginning retained earning in X3, then we keep going. So just make sure you know that you will take the change and you will put it in the beginning of beginning retained earning if you are not if you are not showing all the financial statements if you are not recasting all the financial statements what else do you have to do well you have to disclose this is important when you make a change you have to disclose so we have to see how do we disclose this information what do we disclose well think about it you're going to disclose the nature of the change you're going to have to disclose the method how did you change it the method and applying the change a description what happened to the to the prior period information that was retrospectively adjusted just tell us if any if especially if we're if we are not seeing it just show us what's happening a change of income what happened to the change in income whether it's continuing operation income from continuing operation or net income show me the change the cumulative change in retained earnings remember we're going to have a change in cumulative retained earning or other component of equity show me the change in assets as of the beginning of the earliest period presented so simply put let me show you how what what would look like if we are if we did this change in year x4 let's assume beginning re, re, beginning retained earning happens to be 355 remember we computed the change as 256 the change in retained earnings so this is 256 so this is how we show it in the beginning retained earnings statement 256 now the new the adjusted retained earning is 611 plus this year income equal to ending retained earnings so we it's not only we make the change we have to disclose the change what should you do now you should go to farhatlectures.com and work mcqs true false additional exercises view lectures that's going to help you understand this topic better i will work another example that deals with the change with inventory good luck study hard invest in yourself the cpa is worth it